So the first agenda item is the wrap up for the, the circuit analysis lab. Um, so, so let me do it this way. I'm going to, so this is me, uh, the, the, the example circuit that I did last week. This is me uh, having built it. <laughs> and I will rebuild this circuit uh, with all the steps that I need to go through. And, um, and I do have one request for circuit in the discussion. So I will, um, so, so I'll build this circuit. We definitely have time for that. And depend. And if there are any other people who want to submit their own circuits uh, or have a request for me to um, try building, then uh, you know this is a three-hour lab. We we definitely can do that. And um, and depending on if I get that request or not, I will. Um, I I might do um, maybe your example circuit from the lab activity. So, so, um, so yeah, so let me get started on that. I'm going to uh, first build, um, build the circuit that we did last week. So this is probably a good place to pause as I um, try to replicate this circuit to build this circuit on, uh, uh, to build this circuit um, <laughs> in, in real life <laughs> on here. So, so let me switch. Um, let me switch the focus over to my camera account, and I'm going to. <laughs> let me just do a, a, a show around so that you can uh, see what what it looks like. Um, so let me switch the camera to uh, the one that I'll be using. So. This is the lab. <laughs> um, I have a few things set up here. So I have, sorry, one second. I think I have enough battery to disconnect power. Okay, um, so, so this is my tower of registers. So I'm going to, um, so <laughs> I'll pick, uh, registers from this uh, selection to build whatever circuits I need to build today. Now, one thing that you will notice is that these registrances come in discrete values. So in real world, we don't have a continuous value of registrances that we can pick. So um, even in the circuit that I am building from last week, I will definitely have to make some choices on how to round the numbers. And I might redo the analysis so that, um, so that I have an updated theoretical value that uh, matches the actual real value that I use. So I have my set of registers. Uh, this, um, there's nothing here that we'll be using. It's just, um, I, I was organizing. And uh, we have two measuring devices that we'll be using that um, that you are going to see. Oh, I wonder if this actually works better. Sorry. Um, so I had this claw thing set up um, because I thought it would work better for showing overhead. I think this actually works better. So I, I'm going to re just remove this. It's just in the way. Um, <laughs> so I have two measuring devices. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you are going to see this again when we do inductors, hopefully. Oh. <laughs> so uh, today I'm just using this to measure the resistance. It can also measure the capacitance. That's what this LCR is. L is the inductor that you haven't seen yet. C is for capacitor and R is for register. So this LCR meter, I'm going to use that to actually measure resistances. And there's a reason for that. So uh, as a kind of quick thing, um, so, when I have this, uh, so I'm grabbing a register from 22 kilo ohm uh, drawer. And um, I don't really, I don't remember all the color codes. So I'm not gonna try to read the bands on this register. But even if I did read it and verified it to be 22 kilo ohm, this is what you're going to see when you see me measure resistance. So when I measure the, resistance then on this thing when it updates it says oh this is not the best example it's pretty close 20 point 22.2 kilo 
That's on the closer side. Um, let me just grab two more to hope that some of these are more farther off. <laughs> so this is another one from the same drawer. And, and in case you want to double check the color coding against the one that I did before, it's the same color coding. Um, I'm kind of holding both of them backward. And this one now measures 25.8 kilo. And that's uh, common that the resistances that that's nominal is not necessarily the, uh, it, it can be, depending on the, the tolerance of the registers, it can be quite far off. Um, so with the 25, this was what, 10% off? A, lo a little bit more than 10%, that's actually kind of big. But even when the tolerance is good, 1%, you know, depending on your application, the 1% error might be pretty big error. So it's kind of a good thing to always measure resistances. So I have this measuring device here to measure registers as I pick out the uh, pick out the registers so that when I plug in a register that I think is 22 kilo ohm, I can verify that it is 22 kilo ohm. And the other measuring device that I have is this. This is sometimes called a DMM or digital multimeter. Um, I'm just gonna use this to measure current. So it's, uh, um, so yeah, this is our ammeter. So we do those two measuring devices out of the way. Let me um, go straight into the building circuit. So I have quite a few, oh, you know, I need to explain what these things are you see on the screen. I have quite a few of them. I'm just gonna need to use one. Hopefully one is enough. Um, so this is what's called the breadboard. It, um, it's a circuit, prototyping, uh, circuit prototyping tool. It allows you to build the circuits quickly without soldering anything, without, um, and we do good electrical connections. And um, it allows you to test our circuits quickly. And uh, it's not probably what you want to use for more permanent build because there's capacitances you need to worry about. But if you just want to build a quick register circuit like this one, then this is where you build it. Um, so there's a, maybe one thing to understand about this breadboard is how the connections are made in the back. So when you, uh, so, you know, when you look at this, the circuit that I built while trying this out, you don't see, um, you don't see any wires connecting registers together, but they are going to be somehow all connected together. So for example, these three leads here, that's all connected along this column. They are all electrically connected because there's a, a conductor behind this plastic front that, uh, connects them. Uh, so the way the electrical connection is made this way. Um, for these two um, kind of broad swaths of land or whatever, the um, along the column is where the electrical connection is made. So and between this gap, there's no connection, and along the column here, electrical connection is made. So these five um, any leads that are plugged into these five holes they will all be connected. So if I connect this here um, or here, they will all attach to the same uh, electrical conductor in the back. So that's the regular connections here. And these uh, rows on the top and bottom, they are uh, called power bus. Uh, it's usually used for carrying uh, power voltage supply voltage. And you know we'll probably use it the same way that's normally used. So um, the thing to understand about these connectors at the top and the bottom is um, it's all connected all throughout. So when I plug something in here, that connection goes all the way to here. It's uh, the gap here, it doesn't mean anything. I, I don't know why the gap is there. Doesn't mean anything. Um, so this power bus, uh, it's uh, connected row wise here and row wise here. So there's a four different voltages that I can apply and um, yeah, without shorting anything. So, so I'm going to be building the circuit on this, uh, uh, on this breadboard. This is where um, you'll see 
all the elements are plugged in. And one of the elements that will be plugged in is the power source, the power supply. Sorry, I keep moving this around. It's the power supply. Let me, do I want to turn them on now? You know, let me turn them on. So, um, so I have power supplies two and one. And I guess, uh, you know, I, I think after turning it on, I can just show you the voltage. And at the end of the build, I can um, move the camera to uh, show you the voltage again. And uh, these are already connected to these wires. Um, you know, be careful about shorting the power supply. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't short them. <laughs> these do have overcurrent protection, so it won't uh, break that easily, but like, you know, I just did it once and since it might have been off camera, I can, you know, it, it you know, it, it has overcurrent protection. So it will be fine a few times, but even then if you abuse it too much, it could damage. <laughs> um, so I have wires connected. I color coded them so that the red one is connected to the positive terminal and the black one is connected to the negative terminal. And since the one circuit that I will build has two better uh, voltage sources in it, I have the second power source that's gonna be my V2. And I color coded them differently so that the positive um, terminal one has yellow wire connected and the negative terminal, the grounded connection has a, a green wire connected. So, for now, let me store these wires on the breadboard. That's a easy way to make sure that I'm not going to accidentally um, accidentally short these wires or anything like that. So uh, let me connect. So I'm going to use the bottom row for the V2 or second board, um, battery or voltage source. So I'll have to try to remember that it's plus plus 20 and ground and plus 10 on the top and ground again on the bottom. So, so that's the power supply connection and I need to start building the circuit itself. Oh, you know, I think I can uh, remember the numbering scheme. It's uh, starting from R1 at the top and it's going down down, left, right. So R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. Okay. I think I can remember that. So this is my R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. And so, you know, circuit diagram has a particular geometric shape. Uh, when you actually build a circuit, it will look almost nothing like it. Um, it, uh, this is an example. So this is the exact same circuit as what you see in the diagram. This is what I built while testing out this setup. And you might be able to match some of these, but in the end, it's not designed to look the same. Um, what matters is the topography, that they are topologically, topo not topography, topology, uh, that they are topologically the same. So their shape could be quite different, although, you know, as you are building the circuit, it is your choice if you want to make your, your circuit look exactly like the circuit diagram, but usually it's not worth the trouble. So, sorry, trying to get this unruly wire. All right, so, um, so as you are building the circuit, because the overall shape could look quite different, what I like to focus on is the topology, as in, um, what matters the most are the junctions, that the junctions uh, look right. So for example, on the circuit diagram, I have this uh, junction to the far right most to which I should have R1, R3, and R5 connected. And as I build the circuit, I'm just gonna make sure that that happens, that there's a particular junction where all three registers have the same end connected. So. Uh, so actually, let me start from there. So uh, I'll start with the R1. And um, I'm going to tell you one thing that I will do throughout tonight, which is um, it says R1 is a 10 ohm. And if I really wanted it to, I do have a 10 ohm register. that's right here, um, you know, close to 10 ohm. But um, I I'm not going to use it because 
um, I think I said this before. The like the magnitudes of about one ohm, it's really small resistance. And if you are building your circuits with a ten ohm and hundred ohm, even maybe hundred ohm resistors, uh, you are just going to have huge source of error. And one of them is this. I want you to demonstrate it here. Let's see. Um, so one of the sources of error that will be very significant if you use such small registers is the resistance of the components that are not supposed to have any resistance. So right now you are seeing the, the my resistance meter and um, yeah, close enough. And right now we did literally nothing connected. The resistance from lead to lead alone is about 0.06 ohm. So you say may, maybe, oh, that's not too bad if you are connecting one ohm to that. So I'm grabbing one of the uh, wires here. This is uh, just regular wire with alligator clip at the end. It's a reasonable amount of length. And let me just measure the resistance of this wire. This is actually a pretty thick wire, so its resistance should be on the lower side. I have other thinner wires that would uh, measure larger resistances. So when you measure the resistance here, it's so like connected the one, connecting the other. So this is how much resistance it measures, 0.26 ohm. So if I have registered that's 10 ohm, this alone will already give me 2% error. And um, so, so what I'm gonna do is wherever I see ohm, I'm gonna replace that with a kilo ohm. That'll help me use more reasonable <laughs> values of resistances. And the only simple change you need to make to the analysis to compare those two results is wherever you see ampere, replace it with a milliampere that'll kind of make the unit comparison work out right. So here um, for my R1, instead of grabbing the 10K ohm, uh, instead of grabbing the 10 ohm register up here, I'm going to grab the 10K ohm register here. So, so that'll, um, that'll be my R1 and I'll do the same thing with all the other registers. Uh, wherever it says it's ohm, I'm going to use the kilo ohm version. That should give me the uh, right amount of current when measured in milliamperes, not ampere. Okay, so let me do that. So um, I had this uh, set up, let's see. Um, let me do it this way. So I'm going to switch my other screen so that it's uh, mostly on the thing that measures the resistance. And I am measuring resistance of this R1 register. And as I measure it, I'm going to write it down on my screen somewhere so that I can use that value for other things later. So R1 is, this is actually pretty close to uh, 10 kilo. Ohm. That um, close of a value is usually not a guarantee. Um, so let me do this for R1, R3, and, and R5. And once that's done, I will verify that I built one of the junctions correctly, that I have one junction where all three registers connect. So here's my R1. And you know, where possible, I'm going to try to have the similar shape as the circuit diagram. It's just that um, it's not, go not going to be my obsession. So for the R, um, next one is R3, uh, what's nominally 30 ohm. And looking at the uh, collection of the registers, I don't have a 30 ohm register. I do have a 33, uh, or you know, I don't have 30 K ohm register. I do have 33 kilo ohm. So I'm gonna use this. So this is R3, I'm uh, measuring that. And you should see the measuring thing on the Zoom screen. Uh, let me know in the chat if you are not somehow seeing it. Um, so 33.33, yeah, I think these particular ones are, um, it's probably the gold band, it, uh, gold band here. Um, it, I, I'm gonna guess from the uh, values I'm seeing 1% tolerance. So 
R3 is 33.34 kilo ohm. And it has to connect so that it shares one of the junctions with the R1 register. And since the other end of the R3 register, I have to connect it to something else. I'm going to make sure that it doesn't share the other junction with the R1 register. They are not in parallel. So R3 shares one of the junctions with R1 and the, uh, the other end connects to a free uh, junction that I can connect other things to. Um, finally, R5. Uh, I'm just gonna, you'll have to trust me that I don't have 50 kilo ohm, but I do have 47 kilo ohm and 51 kilo ohm. I'm going to grab 51 kilo ohm. And by the shape of it, I think this is also pretty um, high, uh, tight tolerance register. So let me measure it and see. Uh, I'm guessing it's another 1% uh, register. So yeah, 50.75. So that's my R5. 50.75, 76. Uh, it flips between the two. So it should share one of the junctions with, um, with R1 and R3. And the other junction should be free. It looks like it connects through a battery to the other end of R3. So let me do it this way. I'm going to cross this channel and go from here to here to down here. This way, um, so later on, when I want to connect the battery, all I need to do is connect this side of the channel to this side with the battery and that'll um, complete everything. So let me switch my screen here to um, kind of verify so far that I've been building the circuit correctly. This is my R1, um, that's this register here. This is my R2, that's this register here. And this is my, sorry, not R2, this was my R3. This is my R5, this register here. And all three registers, this the same junction here, that's uh, uh, this junction here, which is connected by wire to the other two registers. Okay, so I need to build out the, I need to place the other two registers. So I need the, twin, uh, the R2 register that, uh, one end of the R2 connects to R3. So it's going to have to connect to, this is not the register, but uh, the R2 is gonna have to connect to somewhere on this column to connect to R3 correctly. And the other end will just go somewhere free to be able to connect to R4 and one end of the battery. So let me do that. Um, so R3 was, Sorry, R2 is 20 ohm. Um, oh, wait, I do have 20 kilo. So let me grab that. Uh, the shape of this register is giving me some worry that it's gonna be rather far from 20 kilo ohm, but let me measure it and see. Um, it, with the lower tolerance registers, it's uh, sometimes just lock over the draw. Um, is it even 20 kilo ohm? It might be. The black band should be zero. So, all right, so it's nominally 20 kilo ohm, but its value is 22.87. So I'm just gonna write that down so that later on, for later I know, 22.87. Um, that's my R2 register. And uh, so let me connect that R2 register here. Um, it's uh, one end will connect to R3 and the other, and it will be free somewhere. Yeah. Oh, these leads are a little bit too thick. All right, I think it went in. Okay, um, and I need to uh, put in the R4 register. As a reminder, let me switch the screen. The, R4 register is uh, here. So one end of it connects to R2. Um, so I'm gonna connect it to this column. And the other end somehow connects to uh, R5. So, oh, so I think I can cross over to this column then 
with the lower curve. Yeah, so let me do that. Um, R5, that, so I'm looking for 50 kilo ohm, but no, R4, <laughs> R4. I'm looking for 40 kilo ohm. Um, on my drawers, I do have 36 kilo ohm and 47 kilo ohm. I think I'm gonna go with the 36. It's uh, slightly closer than 47, yes. So, so, um, so this is my 36 kilo ohm register. Let me measure it and we'll take it from there. Yeah, 30, oh, um, so, um, th so 38.47, let me write it down before I forget. R4 is equal to 38.48. And I see a question in the chat. Uh, what if you need a really tight tolerance? Um, yeah, you can definitely buy registers that are tighter. To so this is really, um, it's more of a high power, low precision register. There are um, high precision registers that are designed and sold that way. I think I have a few here actually. Um, so let me bring this down as a, a kind of an example that I found as I was organizing my register doors. So, this one, the, the label for it says, it gives more significant figures than usual, 8.25 kilo ohm. That's unusual. Normally with the registers, you don't see three significant figures. So the fact that it says 0.25 is unusual. And when you look at these registers, they look unusual. They, um, and I think it, this is not true of all the precision registers that they don't have the color of the bands. Um, but this particular precision register does. Um, and it's only 1%, that's not that high. But you know what, it claims to be over 1% precision. Let me try that. So uh, I'm gonna measure it. And as I measure it, you should see the value. Um, so it was supposed to be 8.25, it's 8.28. So 0.05, so 0.03, that's, uh, yeah, that's better than 1%. That's uh, about 0.3% off. And if I'll just uh, measure two more to kind of show the spread. So when it says 1%, that's the spec. It can't go, shouldn't go outside the 1%. It should often be better than that 1%. So here's a second one. 8.25 exactly, okay. Sometimes it hits it right on the nail. And, uh, oh, I misplaced the third one, so I'm gonna just grab a new one. Um, here's the third one. Um, 8.288, yeah. So there are registers that are designed for higher tolerance. And somehow if you need an even better tolerance than that, then there are, ways to build it. Uh, one would be to combine a low, so you would have to maybe hand select the register and combine the uh, one of the hand selected ones with lower value register so that um, it to get to the exact resistance you want. Um, the thing you do have to be careful of when you do that is um, the thermal dependence of the resistance. <laughs> um, so you might have selected, let's say one of these, um, which register looks terrible. Uh, you might have chosen one of these 130 K ohm registers and maybe you measured its value and you, you know, got its value to be precisely, um, at, so for whatever reason, you didn't 130 K ohm, you wanted 135.3 K ohm and you chose this one specifically. Now the problem is, I think um, this is large enough that, yeah. So as I hit it with my hand, you see it's resistance changing before your eyes. So, um, oh wait, no, I was actually making contact with my fingers. So, okay. So, okay, it's not quite as dramatic as what you were seeing before, but even then um, by me holding it, warming it or, or cooling it, cooling it is harder. 
So you have to worry about the temperature. So, you know, that's the kind of real world um, complication that we won't get into because <laughs> that's uh, for the next level circuit class. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to finish building this circuit and connect the battery. So I need to connect the voltage source, the V2. The so this is the V2. I need to connect that uh, the positive end um, to the R3 junction. Uh, think this one, that's this column here. That's the junction that connects R3 to R2. So to do that, I have these uh, jumper wires and I'm going to just grab one of the right length and jump. Uh, from the, between the connections needed. And depending on how the circuit is laid out, sometimes it's good to um, use the shortest possible wire. So this is not the shortest possible wire. I'm using a quite long one because it's easier. Um, and depending on the complexity of the circuit you are building, uh, you might want to use something that's you know shorter like this one, ones of the, just the right length, no long, longer. This is not that, it's definitely longer than what I need, but I'm using it because it's easier. So here's, um, so this end is now connected to plus 20 volts. And let me connect the negative end of the battery to the other junction. I think I built it that, this way deliberately. This is the other end of the 50 kilo uh, or R5. So, so that I can actually connect with the short wire one of these shorter orange jumper cable. And I can just, uh, wait, orange is too short, maybe yellow. Um, so one of these, of the just the right length, I'm going from the, the below power bus, the zero volt line here to this junction here. So I connected the battery. And uh, I need to connect the, the uh, V1. That's gonna connect from the, this end of R2 to that end of R1. So let me, um, let me move the R1 register a little bit. That'll help me connect the EGR to the power bus with the exactly correct length of the wire. So yeah, and I'm gonna connect the positive end to R1. So that's gonna be the super short, super short. No, that's also gonna be yellow. Yellow is the just the right length to close them and cross them any uh, number of rows that I need. So I'm going from plus 10 to this end of um, R1. So there's that, yeah, you can't quite see it. Close enough. And let me connect the uh, zero volt end to the, um, yeah, uh, to the uh, R2. Um, I just realized something. I hope these are floating power supplies because um, if they are not, then sometimes you can create accidental shorts in your circuit. Like if both of the power supplies are connected to the ground, then, um, then this is kind of what I'm getting it. So this is zero volt, let me make sure I'm sharing the screen. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, what I'm getting it. This uh, um, zero volt side of the battery here and the zero volt side of this battery here, there's no connection between that and there isn't supposed to be. Um, but if my power supplies are grounded power supplies, then you have to imagine that there's a wire going to ground from here, going to ground from here, which means these two are technically connected. So I think at this point, I'm just gonna hope that that is not the case. <laughs> um, and if it is the case, we will see that because um, the current that we measure will be different from what we expect it to be. Um, and uh, you know, if it's different, then that's one of the first things I would check to see if they are both grounded or if they are floating, as in the zero volt end of the two power supplies are not electrically connected behind the scene. So, okay, that's all the connections. Um, 
nothing unusual is happening. <laughs> so what I need to do now is connect this ammeter to uh, connect this ammeter to to measure the current. And I can see in the circuit diagram current values in the simulation that these are all going to be less than one ampere, or if I, since I'm using kilo ohm resistors, less than one milliampere. So I'm going to set this to 2000, and this mu symbol means micro. So the number you see here will be in micro amperes. So let me do the easy ones first. I want to look at the current through the each of the uh, power supplies, the V1 and V2. So uh, through V1, so it should be 0.26 milliampere. Let's see if it is. Uh, oh, yeah. So this is the thing about connecting um, ammeters that's always challenging, which is that um, you always have to modify the circuit. So, um, so you know, if I just connect across there, I'm going to be shorting the power supply. I don't, uh, that's not what I want to do. Uh, what I want to do is I want to interpose the ammeter into the circuit. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is, let me connect to this, um, this uh, um, jumper wire to the negative terminal of the ammeter. And I'm going to disconnect the positive uh, side and I'm going to uh, connect to this jumper wire in place of the positive side of the uh, power supply and then connect this end to the positive end. So this uh, interposes the ammeter into the circuit. So I get 237 microampere or you know, 0.237 milliampere. And that seems about right to me. Uh, let me write that number down so that in case I need it later. I1 is equal to, um, uh, 0 0.237 milliampere. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's not 0 0.26, but we had to make some, um, we, we had to make some um, uh, compromises in terms of choosing the register value. So that's probably close enough, which probably means the um, the batteries are not, the, the power supplies are not grounded. Uh, let me measure the current through the V2. And, you know, I think I can actually measure the voltage uh, difference between the two grounds. Um, so, or not grounds, between the two negative terminal of the power supply. So with this one here, um, I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna interpose the uh, ammeter into the, uh, where the battery V2 is. So this uh, end is going to where the positive a wire of the V2 was going, and I'm um, interposing the ammeter into that place by connecting this. So with that, I get 575 microampere or 0 0.575. Um, so that would be this current here. Uh, it has its own label. Uh, let me label that. I, I know I have a different label for it. I'm just going to go with it. Um, so that's 0 0.575 milliampere. And that's pretty close to what it's supposed to be, 0 0.59. So it's probably correct. Um, so I'm going to do this thing. So what I can do to, uh, so I'm pretty sure the power supply here, they are not grounded, which is a good thing because if they're grounded then, <laughs> then there are some things I need to worry about. So I, I'm thankful that I don't have to worry about them. Let me just double check here. So I'm gonna change this mode to DC voltage measuring mode and just to measure the voltage difference between the, uh, the ground of V2 here and the ground of V1. So yeah, there's a like a 9.2 volt difference. So that's probably, Right. Um, okay, so I measured the two currents and technically speaking, um, I would need to measure like five more currents for or four more currents because one of them is already going through a register. 
Um, <laughs> but as you saw, the, the process of measuring current is cumbersome because it always involves it always involves modifying the current. It's time consuming. And, and with the power supplies, I just had to do that. There was no other way. Now with the registers, there is a better way because I know the resistance of these registers so precisely. If I knew the voltage drop across each one of them, I can just uh, calculate the current from that value. So I think I'm gonna do that instead. Instead of measuring the current, I'll just measure the voltage drop across each register and use the known value of resistance to calculate the current from that. Let me do that with the R1 first, since uh, for R1, I already know the current, so it'll give me a kind of a check. So I'm already on the mode to measure voltage. Um, let me put this across R1. So um, I think this is R1. So here's the <laughs> trying to get at the correct. You know, it's actually easier. Let me use the alligator clip. These are better. These are registered, long leg registers have exposed the conductor. So I can just uh, clip to them. So here's the higher end of the voltage, hopefully, and the lower end of the voltage. All right. So I get the V1, VR1 of um, 2.36 volts. And if you want, you can double check with a calculator. Doing the calculation in my head, I think it more or less matches up, at least within 1% tolerance. So I, I think it's right. Let me do this for um, R2. So R2 is uh, this register here. Um, and I think this end is still the higher uh, voltage side. So let me put this. And if I guessed it wrong, then I'll get a negative number. So nah, I'll just leave it be. I think if, okay, <laughs> I guessed it wrong. <laughs> so I get a negative number and, um, oh yeah. That looks wrong. Because on the uh, diagram here, it's uh, flowing from the, Oh, no, 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 it's right. Uh, current flows from the high voltage to low voltage. So since the current is flowing towards the junction that's uh, connected to the battery, so this should be the, sorry, I keep bumping the camera. Uh, this should be the um, <laughs> negative end <laughs> of the thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I connected correctly. Now I get positive voltage. So we, uh, we, R2 is uh, 10.78 volts. And let me keep going with R3. So R3, let me try to get this one right. So <laughs> current is flowing into the junction with the R1 and R5. So that's the lower voltage. Let me connect uh, black end there. That's the lower voltage and the other end should be the higher voltage. Let me just make sure it's, I'm not showing anything. Okay, 3.19 volt, and that seems to make sense. The current there is kind of low, so it's probably right that it's low, 3.19 volt. And finally, um, Not finally, two more, <laughs> R4. Um, R for the lower voltage end is this end here. The higher voltage end is here. And I get 9.24 volt. We are, we are five, four. 9.24 volts. And one way to make a sense of this is uh, if I compare this number to the current for, or the voltage for R1, this should be about four times for the voltage for R1. Because I see here that about the same current flows through them, four times the larger resistance, it should be four times. And 
seems to match roughly. And um, yeah, so, so I'm doing this check as we go because if uh, there was some silly mistake and something was off, it's uh, much easier to fix it now than to go back later. And um, after we've uh, disassembled everything to try to fix it, that takes much more time. So this is the final R5. This is the lower voltage N and the higher voltage N, 16.8. Okay. So VR5 is 16.81 volt. So that's uh, it, all the measurements you do need to see how well the model calculation for this circuit matches with the um, matches with the uh, um, actual real world circuit with all the uh, with all the imperfections. So this uh, real world circuit, um, I'm applying this much voltage. So because I'm drawing very little current, almost a zero on that scale it didn't really change the voltage at all. But you know, if I wasn't more careful and if I was using lower uh, resistance uh, register, then uh, yeah, anyways. So they are both providing 10 and 20 volt. Uh, so it should all work out fine. So, so that's my circuit. I think, uh, well, that took an hour. So, uh, let me hold off on um, doing this calculation and comparing the numbers until later, maybe if we have time. And um, for now, let me look at um, let me look at one of the uh, circuits that your classmates have posted. So I think that's a here. Um, yeah. So this is circuit. So let me let me build that circuit and see how that works out. Uh, I'm going to use the same convention, meaning I'm going to, where I see 10 ohm, I'm going to read the 10 kilo ohm and the uh, resistances you, or, and the current that you see, you should uh, make the milliampere measured here, equivalent to, to ampere calculated here. So let me, down, you know that, and, Yeah, and I'll try to go a little bit faster this time. Um, all right, uh, so I, so let me write it down first. Uh, R1, R2, uh, R3, R5. And as I um, measure them, I'll replace these nominal values with the real actual value. Um, R6, 6, R4, 3, R7, 10, and for the voltages, uh, so I'm just gonna use one value, uh, 24 volts. That's gonna be the same voltage for uh, both of, oops. yeah, I, I think you can still see, same voltage for both of these. So I'll change this one's value so that it's, um, so that they are both at 24 volts. By the way, at these uh, lower voltages, lower than like 50 volts or so, the biggest danger with the circuits is usually um, accidentally burning something out. Uh, that's one of the things that can happen if you connect a register that's too low value because it'll draw too much current, it'll try to dissipate more power than it's rated for and it'll burn out. That's one of the reasons I want to stick to higher value registers, that it's safer because it draws less current, less heat dissipation. Uh, all right, 24 volts. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to um, bring, I, this is why I have plenty of breadboards here so that I can um, build a whole new circuit on a new breadboard instead of trying to take that down or do other stuff. And I'm go the reason I'm storing wires this way is this uh, kind of makes it, it, this ensures that I don't um, accidentally short things out from flailing wires. Okay. So, so the moment I unplug it from the other breadboard, I want to, plug it into this new breadboard. I don't wanna. Okay. 
Okay, so that's my new circuit breadboard and I need to build my circuit. <laughs> um, um, yeah, let me go in order. I'll do R1, R2, R3. It looks like they can be built almost like they are in, um, in a series of, a circuit and then we'll need to modify it. But uh, let me do that. So let me change my screen share so that you see my, uh, sorry, that's just random value that's showing up. Um, so my R1 is 10 kilo. So let me grab one of those. And I'm measuring this 10 kilo ohm register. Ten point oh five, pretty good. Uh, ten point oh two. Um, yeah. So this is actually one of the lessons that's a good tool. If you are doing circuit design, uh, you need to build in with some tolerances in mind. If your circuit needs the components to be within point one percent to work, you have designed a terrible circuit. Um, I think a usual rule of thumb is you want your circuit to, to operate with a 10% tolerance, as in if your voltage is off by 10%, resistance is off by 10%, capacitance is off by even more than that, then your circuit should still work fine. Um, so that's R1. Let me find R2, that's five kilo ohm. So I don't have five kilo ohm, I do have 4.7 kilo ohm. So I'm gonna grab one of those. Again, nominal 4.7 kilo ohm, which is why I measure to be sure. <laughs> the label says 4.7. Let me see if I can grab another one so that it's not so comically off. Um, maybe it's mislabeled. That also happens in a poorly kept stock room. <laughs> I don't think a 5.6 is that far off, so I'm open to using it if the second one is also around that. 5.3. I'll just use that. This is why we measure that. Uh, 5.385, um, and yeah, yeah, that's why we measured them. Um, and this uh, connects to R1, almost uh, like a series of circuits. So, well, it is actually series this time. The next one, it's uh, I'll say it's a series-like, but I'm gonna be making modifications that will stop them from being series. So R3 is a seven kilo ohm. I don't have seven, I don't think, did I? Yeah, 4.7. Uh, I have 8.2. Oh, I. So I have two different kinds of 8.2 ohm registers. There's that high precision one that you saw before, which will be pretty close to 8.25 if I use it. Um, there's this one, which is nominally 8.2. Let me just measure it and see. Eight point four. Yeah. So let me uh, use the high precision one. So this is uh, probably the um, best thing about the high precision registers is that you waste. If you are trying to get a more precise value, you waste less time hunting for the right random number. Basically, <laughs> you just uh, you know it's pretty much guaranteed to be, lie within that narrow range. So you can uh, you grab one and you measure it to double check and it pretty much fits what you're gonna use it for. So let me use this one um, because it's uh, closest to seven kilo ohm that I can find in my collection. Okay, so I'm gonna connect it like it's a series with R1 and R2. But so I keep saying, so this junction, I'm gonna do something to it, which will make this no longer series. Okay, um, let me change my share screen so that we can see and make sure we are on the right track. So uh, we built R1, R2, and R3. So we need to connect R5 and R6 to the same junction. Um, so yeah, let me do this. So this column is gonna be a special column that a lot of stuff connects to. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 and I think I have enough room for that room for everything. So 
Yeah. So R5, I think I'm going to go straight down because uh, that'll make it easier to, uh, yeah. And the R6, I'm going to go across to connect to R7 later. So, yeah. So let me do R5. Let me get uh, R5, which is supposed to be 10 ohm. Um, and I do have 10 kilo ohm registers. So it's going to be 10 ohm. Yeah, I guess one advantage of being in the Zoom session is you have control over your own screen. So uh, when I forget to spotlight the correct video, you can uh, you can switch your own view. So R5 is 10.045. And I'm trying to be careful not to touch it because if I touch it, hmm. This is again one of the benefits of higher precision registers that uh, they are usually, um, is it called a laser trimming? They, there's a way to make resistance, uh, registers less uh, susceptible to temperature dependence, and they usually do that with the more high precision registers. Not the, um, and you know, it's done to a higher tolerance uh, that, uh, for that too. Okay, R6, so that's going to be 6 ohm. Um, I think the closest uh, I had, oh. all right, that value of six, I'm gonna have to make it five. And by five, I mean 4.7. Because I have nothing between 4.7 and 8.2. And I think 4.7 is closer. Um, so, And do let me know if that's something that really matters. What I can do is I can put this register in series with a 1K of, oh, and actually that's pretty close to six ohm. So uh, I think that's fine. <laughs> sometimes, so that's, I guess, the benefit of uh, lower precision registers is that sometimes you, by random chance, get the value that's closer to what you want anyway. I, I don't know if that's actually a good thing. So here I'm trying to plug it in carefully so that the other end is, uh, goes to one of the columns that's not already in use by my um, by my R3 register that I put in earlier. So that's this column. This is one column away, so it's elsewhere. So that's my R6. And um, if you look at the circuit diagram in the discussion section, it, it's a R6 is in series with R7. So I'm going to grab R7, 10 kilo, and put that in series with R6. So uh, this is my R7. Ten point, yeah, beautiful. Ten point oh six two. That's the high precision, <laughs> high precision uh, resistor. Um, and this is in series with R6, which means goes here and I'm trying to make sure that it goes into a column that's just currently not in use. So, okay. Oh, you know, act actually I can simplify the circuit a little bit. Let me do this. Uh, so when you look at the circuit diagram, you see that the end of R7 is the same end as end of R3. So rather than making sure that these are on different columns, I can actually make sure that they, they are on the same column. And that'll actually be one, um, one connection that I don't have to extraneously put in. Because again, I'm uh, focusing on the topology. So I'm noticing that topologically, the junction that this ends at is the same junction that R7 ends at. So I'm making them share the same junction on the circuit. That's all fine. And I do have to worry about how R5 connects to that junction. It looks like it has to do through one of the power supplies. So I'll do it that way. Um, so I'll remember that this connects to that. And I'm just gonna finish up R4. That's the last uh, register that I need to put in. So I need a three kilo ohm register. I don't have three, but I have 2.7. So I'm gonna grab a 2.7 kilo ohm register. Oh, let me change the screen.
2.743. Now here, the downside is that, um, so I don't know if the current time measure will be reasonable because uh, <laughs> I didn't do the analysis yet. Uh, we can definitely do that afterwards maybe. Um, so let me connect to this to R3. So it's gonna have to connect to this junction here. Let me connect it out this way. Wait, uh, out this way, yeah. Then um, I can, so R4 connects from the junction that R3 and R7 connects to. And then um, it has the other end free to connect to the power supply. So, okay. So let me uh, show the circuit diagram again and connect, uh, make the power supply connections. So this is the R4 connection. It connects to one of the power supplies. This time they are interchangeable, but I'll, um, I'll use the one on the left as my V1, the ones with the red and black wires. So the end of R4 should go to the ground, go to the, the black end. So let me do that with one of these jumper wires. Uh, red is too short. Uh, I think one of the orange ones will be long enough. So it's going to zero volt here. And the positive terminal should connect to R1. And I think the way I laid out the circuit, this was R1. So that will have to connect to the positive terminal. I think this will be long enough. Yeah, actually too long, almost. Okay, so that's uh, one power supply connected to the registers. It sh should be all fine. Um, the other power supply, the positive terminal connects to R5. Um, so yeah, that's where it connects to. And then the negative terminal connects to the, the shared junction there. So let me use uh, one of the orange um, jumper wire to connect the positive terminal to R5. And uh, use one of the longer jumper wire to make that longer connection between the negative terminal and the, the that complicated junction with the three registers connected to. And that's one of the ways you can double check that you are building the circuit correctly. Um, because I see there are three registers connected to that junction on the circuit diagram. I see three registers connected there. That's one of the ways to double check that it at least has a chance of being correctly built. So, yeah, so that's uh, it. Um, nothing's a smoking, so I hope nothing's gonna be burning out or anything. <laughs> and, and you know, these registers are large enough that even if some of the power supplies being applied a uh, negative voltage, it'll be fine. Um, so let me do this. I'm gonna measure the current through the power supply and the uh, voltage across each of the, the seven registers, same deal as before. So I'm going to Connect this jumper cable to uh, negative. Uh, need to put this to uh, the same setting as before. This jumper cable to uh, here and uh, red wire, the positive terminal to make it go through the ammeter. So. Okay, I get some current. Let me write it down, uh, 0.721 uh, milliampere. So I1 is 0 0.721 milliampere. Hopefully that's right. Um, although without doing the full, oops, full analysis, um, I don't know. It, it, it comforts me that it's, uh, you know, bigger than, it's not zero. <laughs> if it's a zero, you know, something could be wrong. Uh, it, or, you know, it's clear that something is wrong. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, connect the current through V2, same deal. Uh, the positive terminal of V2 goes through the 
positive end of the ammeter, and I get now 1.299 milliamp here. Uh, I can type by 1.299 milliamp. Milliampere. Um, yeah, and I, I guess it makes, does it make sense to me that this current is higher? I, I don't know if it does uh, necessarily because the rest of the register network is, it's complicated enough that it's hard for me to say. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna leave that be. <laughs> and I'm gonna do the same thing that we did before, measure the voltage across each two of the registers and that'll give you enough information to calculate the current through the register. And the advantage of this method is that you don't have to disconnect the circuit each time. So, so I'm gonna uh, put the um, terminals in the way that I think the current will flow I think the current will flow from here to here. So yeah, that gives me positive voltage. So we are one of 7.20 volts. And R2, uh, let me make sure I'm sharing the, yeah, sharing the correct screen. Um, R2 is, so the current will, continue to flow in the same direction. And I'm just gonna connect this to one of the junction things. Not gonna necessarily hunt down the particular register. Okay, uh, 3.87, And if I wanted to do a little arithmetic, I technically didn't need to uh, move that terminal around. I could have done, uh, I could have done 11.08 minus 7.2, and that gives something close enough to what I got by directly measuring. R3, that uh, um, this register, no, that this register here, I think. Yeah. So uh, the current, I think, will still flow down, um, like from top to bottom on R3. So this is the negative end. What I'm guess, oh, sorry. This is what I'm guessing is negative end, and this is positive end. Yeah, 10.94. And R5. Um, so that's where it gets a little bit tricky. I think the current is going to flow up. So the one at the end that's connected to the 24 volts, I think that will be at higher end and the other end will be the lower voltage end. So yeah, with that, get that guess is correct. So VR5 is 13.07. Uh, um, R6, that's uh, this register here. I think the current is gonna flow down, which means, um, Yeah, wait, am I? No, no, sorry, this is R6, R2 and then R6, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I need to swap this around. So if I connect it this way, it should be negative. Yeah, it's a negative, so I, I mean, I could have technically just measure it and record it as positive. <laughs> so I think this is the higher voltage end relative to this end that the current will flow to, 3.94. And that technically is actually enough to give you the current here without the voltage measurement across R7. But if you do voltage measurement across R7, the benefit that you get from that is it allows you to double check your calculation of the current through R6. This one, this measurement is actually redundant, but it'll allow you to double check. So good to have something to double check with. Oh wait. Um, we are seven is equal to 6.98. Oh, and I guess we can do the double check now. If uh, um, So if I take the ratio of a voltage to the register, that should be the current. So 6.98 divided by 10.064, 0 0.694. Point, 
so it's not 0.694, but it's off by maybe 1%. So that's probably right. So within 1%. Uh, so finally, R4. Um, oh, you know, there I don't have a good guess. Um, I feel like this end should be at higher voltage, but uh, I could be wrong. Let's see. Um, so if I'm guessing this to be at higher end, then I think this is how I'm connecting. And if my guess was wrong, I'll get a negative number. So I'll just flip it around. All right, <laughs> it wasn't wrong. <laughs> um, so we are four is equal to 1.98. And this is now enough information to double check your circuit analysis. It, um, complete enough set of information. So, so let me do it this way. I, I think what's uh, good to do is, um, <laughs> let me, uh, I think it's a good to double check uh, all these numbers which means uh, double checking my calcul, so, you know, redoing my earlier calculation with the modified numbers and um, seeing how well that, um, that works out. Um, so, you know, I, I think a 1% variation I would allow, even between measurements and the actual circuit working, resistance could vary by about 1%. It, that, I, and if that were to happen, it wouldn't surprise me because circuit the register heats up a little. Or um, so I think I'm shooting for all the measurements to be within one percent uh, when I predict it with the, the correct values of registers and everything. Um, so let me take about five minute break at this point. That'll give me enough time to move into my usual room and um, set up the <laughs> multi screen thing to. Uh, do the calculation and I'll, I think I should be able to do it relatively quickly. And, um, and I think we'll have a little bit of time left at the end. Okay, I just uh, resume the recording. Um, thank you for those still with us <laughs> and back from break. Um, so this is the circuit that we did all these measurements for. And I want to, um, and this is the uh, what's uh, supposed to be the Kirchhoff's uh, equations for this. So let me just uh, label all the elements of this to make sure that it uh, looks right and we'll correct anything that needs to be corrected as we go. And then we will solve it, we'll get numerical values and see if they match up. So, um, So, how do I? So, um, so this is my equation one, and I say that here I'm going to be going across the registers R1, R2, and R3, R1, R2, and R3. Okay, so I think I see the shape of the loop. The loop that I'm going through is this one. So as I'm going through this loop, so I have this current I1 that's going through R1 and R2. So that's gonna be so that's gonna be my current I1. And you know, normally as you are solving this, it um, you would do it the other way. You would label your current, and then by applying Kirchhoff's rules, you would write down these equations. I'm going the other way because I have equations that are given to me, and I just want to verify that they um, they are the correct set of equations before I start solving. And that's really the point of the physics general problem solving approach, which is that you, um, is that you um, have the correct set of equations and you verify that they are correct before you do a lot of algebra with it. Um, equation two, it's going across to this one and I see um, R5 and I see R3. So that's gonna be, oh, and I should have labeled I2 from before. So let me do that. Um, so there's the current I2. Um, and the loop here would be starting from here, going around this way, and then coming back. 
that's the loop. And uh, I, the current label I'm using for the current across through R5 is uh, I4. And yeah, and uh, I'm trying to get the directions right. This is the direction that's consistent with the equation that's written. Um, I4 going up would cause you to drop voltage as you go across the register. And um, yeah, and this part is fine. The third equation that's the going through the same battery and then same register, and then D is a set of registers. So um, looking at that I5, I need to have current I5 going down this way. Um, one second, I just want to double check. I'm, yeah, I guess I'm using the right microphone. <laughs> oh, I'm using the wrong webcam. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's not my normal webcam. Um, so, so let me draw that loop. Yeah, people can hear and see me good. <laughs> yeah. It's just that the video you see is not the normal video, but it's fine. Um, okay, so that's so these are my equations two and three. And um, so I do have a bit of a concern in that I only have up to six currents and seven equations. That's where I want to make sure that I don't have extra equations. And uh, I have, uh, there's I3. I have current through uh, R4 that um, I should have labeled, yeah, I3. Okay, so I have current I1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I6. Ah, I see. So I believe, um, so let me try to make a sense of this. So the junction with the I4, um, so I, I see this junction here, but no, I4 on the opposite side of I3 which I don't think it is. Yeah, so I think there may be some problem with this. Let me just uh, leave it before now. I3 and I1. Uh, hmm. Actually, your I3 should be the same as I1 because it's the same current that flows through both of them. So I think I'm gonna get rid of I3. Just I, I, I'm gonna, um, so I'm going to just relabel this as I1 because they're the same. In terms of the system of equations or, or you know, let me do it this way. <laughs> so I, I can actually do this. Let me leave it as I3. And in terms of uh, fixing it in the program, I can have this equation that says um, I1 is equal to I3. And so I think I can probably do with only uh, definitely less than um, five system of equations, but let me uh, finish this through. Um, I5 and I6. So, okay. Um, so, Yeah, yeah. So I think if I have this label here, I6, that makes a sense. Um, then you have I2 is equal, no, does it make sense? Um, I3, yes, okay, so this is where, um, I'm not quite sure what to make of these junction rule equations. So um, let me show you two approaches that can be taken here. Um, one, uh, which I think uh, is what this was. Um, so, and you have four junction equations. Okay. Um, so let me show you the simplest uh, path first. The simplest is to realize that you actually only need one junction equation and you are done. And the way you would realize that is, um, so is a one simplifying some of the junctions that are just connected by a wire. So this whole thing, 
that is one junction. Uh, it's not um, one and two junctions or even three junctions. It, this whole thing is just one. And basically any current that's uh, between these, you just ignore it. It's just, you know, all the currents that are flowing into this uh, whole big junction, I1 and I4, they are both current in. And I2 and I5, they're both current out of that one junction. And you notice the same simplification on this end, then um, you realize, oh, that's my second junction. And one of the things I told you about applying Kirchhoff's rules is that you don't use all the junctions. You always leave one junction unused because the last junction is guaranteed to give you a dependent system of equations. So using that approach, you would write down just uh, one uh, junction rule equation, which would be, uh, oops, which would be I1 current in plus I4, the other current in is equal to uh, I2 plus I5, the two currents out. And then you're done. Um, and so not using any of this. So I have three loop rule equations and two uh, junction rule equations. And you will see that, oh yeah, that, that all works out. I have five unknowns, five equations, not two, you know, this is just a fix for labeling here. Um, so, I, but I have five equations, five unknowns, I'm all set. Um, so that's the simplest way to do it. Um, suppose you didn't want to make things simple, then, you know, then you, you can make it complicated. It's not, a, uh, it's not a bad thing, especially if it helps you learn problem solving. So um, right now, what I'm missing is I'm missing current label for this. So let me give it a label of I6. Uh, that seems to make sense. Oh, uh, you know, the, the direction for I6 could be wrong, but either way, I'm just gonna, lab I labeled it, I'm gonna leave it be. Um, and I need an I7, so I'm gonna label, yeah, let me label I7 this way. And again, this direction could be wrong, I'm gonna leave it be. So now I have seven unknowns. <laughs> and um, so with this particular approach of analysis, you have one, two, three, four junctions, and again, don't use the last junction, it will only give you a dependent equation. So I could write down three additional junction rule equation. And that will actually give me, so I have seven unknowns and so I'll have seven unknowns and seven equations. So that will be right. Um, the, using the top left junction, it's I1 um, is equal to I6 plus I2 or I2 plus I6, the two, um, two outgoing currents and the upper right junction I6 plus I4 is equal to um, I5. And uh, I'm not using this junction. This junction here is I2 is equal to, uh, I7 is also coming in, plus I7 is equal to I3. So these are my four um, junction rule plus this relabeling equation. So I'm gonna be using those. Um, yeah, so let me do the rest of the math with the Sage. I kind of had it here. Um, is, am I gonna be okay if I, yeah, if I get rid of all the labels, I think I'll be fine. Um, or is there a way to save the annotations? Oh, save. Maybe. Oh, let me do it. Okay, save so this PNG and then let me clear all the annotations. Um, so um, let me just uh, uh, put uh, marks here so that I know I'm not using these equations. Uh, okay, so uh, I need to declare all my variables. Wait. Oh, yeah, oops, it's fine. <laughs> oh, um, sorry. I, I had some issues with starting Sage uh, at the beginning. I really shouldn't have restarted that. Um, 
I've been uh, experimenting with something called Windows subsystem for Linux. And uh, this is not it because right now my Windows subsystem for Linux is messed up. It's not working. Uh, so, <laughs> so can't do that, <laughs> so, but this is working now. So let me do that. Uh, I need to declare the variables. So it's gonna be v1, v2, r1, r2, r3, r4, R5, R6, R7, and then all the currents. I1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, but not 8. Okay, that's all the variables, I think. So um, my equations are um, V1 minus I1 times R1 minus I1 times R2 minus I2 times R3, uh, my minus I3 times R4 is equal to zero. Um, <clears throat> V2 minus I4 times R5 minus I2 times R3 is equal to zero. Um, V2 minus I4 times R5 minus I5 times R6 minus I5 times R7 is equal to zero. That's uh, my loop rule equations. Uh, uh, I probably, let me actually do it this way so that it's easier to see. This is my first equation. This is my second equation. And this is my third equation. And Python is a, uh, uh, well, it's a, well, it, it's smart enough to handle this. <laughs> let me leave that there. Because uh, white spaces are actually meaningful in uh, Python. Uh, I6 plus I4 is equal to I5. I2 plus I7 is equal to I3. Okay, that's my equations. Um, now I can solve uh, for those equations and I'm actually gonna put that into solution. Uh, I'm, and I'm solving for all the currents. And I don't think it prints it by default. Um, I guess when it's done solving, I'm going to um, just check the index zero for I1. Or I'm not gonna do any of those. I'm just gonna plug in the numbers. <laughs> Let me um, have the rules for, um, yeah, 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 I, sorry, I got distracted by these numbers. I don't need that. So, um, so my uh, substitution rule built as a dictionary is um, my voltages V1 and V2 are just 24 and my resistances 10.02 and 5.35. Yeah, the order doesn't matter because it's uh, uh, keyed by the dictionary key. Uh, 5 and 7, 3, 4, 4 2 7, 4, 3, 7, 10 point 0, 6, 4. Okay. And um, I can substitute the rule to get a number. <laughs> and, oh, right. And uh, so this is I1, and I'm just gonna check I3 because they're supposed to be the same, and they're the same. Okay, um, so how should I do this? I, I think it, um, I'm, it's probably quickest to just, uh, um, well, the I guess the problem here is the current through, some of these don't necessarily match up. Um, so the currents that I really care about are um, I1 that's going through R1. So, um, and uh, well, I actually have a calculator here. So that's gonna be um, voltage 7.2 divided by 10.02. So let me, so that's the uh, experimental value, 0 0.7186 milliampere. And um, 
So R2 doesn't have a unique current associated with it. R3, I think the way we labeled it, that was I2. Yeah, so that's I2. Um, so that's 10.94 divided by 8.239, 1.328. Yeah, four significant figures. That's enough to distinguish a 1% error. Um, and R5, that's a I4. Yeah, I4. Um, so 13.07 divided by 10.045, 1.301. Um, and R6, that's, uh, I think that's I5. Three point nine four divided by five hundred zero point six eight six eight. Um, yeah, and the other currents are all duplicative. R seven is another I five. R four is I three, which technically is I one. So, um, so I already did uh, check I one. So the theoretical value is 0 0.7197. Um, so we are within 1%, that's my goal. So um, I'm done there. Uh, let me check I2. So that's uh, index one. Okay, 1.327. Oh, that's well within the, so that's within 0 0.1 precision, so good. Um, so this is, by the way, one of the things you would uh, uh, find with uh, circuits that you can get very high precision results. Uh, this is within almost a 0.1%. Um, and so, uh, okay, this one isn't. <laughs> so 0 0.6923 compared with 0 0.6868, but even then that's within 1%. And um, with the physics experiment, maybe not at this lower division level, but once you go to upper division and you start doing measurements with the assistance of electronic devices, 1% um, precision is kind of common. It's a doable with some care and effort. And um, that's a really <laughs> one of the um, purpose of this uh, two hour exercises for is that I want you to get used to the idea of one even 1% 1 of precision being kind of typical or something that's uh, easily achievable with some care. And because I think uh, in your other science classes, you know, in chemistry, you calculate yield percentage. And I guess if you get 80% yield, that's supposed to be good or something. And 20% error in physics, it's a horrible error, even in lower division. In lower division, we try to get 10% error because that's uh, easy to achieve with some care. And we do more, you know, um, sophisticated upper division experiments, even higher precision is possible. You just have to, you know, carefully eliminate sources of error. Like if you use these nominal resistances, that'll be one source of error. So, which is why in a real measurement, you can kind of correct for that by correcting this to the actual value you use that measure. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess uh, we don't quite have enough time for me to redo this one. And in any case, you have the video from the other one. Um, you can kind of go through the calculation yourself and just to replace the values with the one that I measured earlier. That's, uh, wait, is it this one? Yeah, that's uh, this one. So, um, and I think I'm using the same label as there. If you um, replace the, the resistance values from what I used in the previous calculation, you know, 10, 30, 50, 20, 40 to this actual values, you, do, you should see that the agreement is uh, much better. So, so um, just to kind of wrap up the easy portion here, if I just uh, calculate the current, then you get I3 of, where's my calculator? Um, Zero point zero nine five seven. Um, I five of zero point three three one two. 
um, milliampere, all of them. And 0 0.2401 milliampere. And if you compare these numbers to what you see in the simulation right now, they won't agree 100% because of the rather large uh, error in the component values. But if you update the calculation to use the closer values, then you should see better agreement. So let me leave that for you to do if you want to do it. Um, so, so this wraps up the circuit, um, 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 the circuit analysis portion of the lab. The, your lab report is due tonight. If uh, for some reason you need more time, you know, 